This video is about humanity's ultimate dream, achieving immortality. You might think this is only possible in science fiction, but today some of the world's top scientists are working hard to find a way to stop the biggest killer of all, aging, and they have made some amazing progress. They've already reversed aging in mice, and they believe they can do the same for humans soon. Hi, I'm Namo Abdullah, and in this episode, I'll show you how cutting-edge research on longevity is changing our understanding of life and death. It's not really a question of if, it's a question of when. I'll take you inside a Harvard University lab where a mouse that was blind can see again after its cells were rejuvenated. I'll introduce you to a new scientific perspective on aging. So I think it's useful to interpret aging as a disease. If aging is a disease, can we cure it and prevent all the other diseases that come with it? Can you imagine a world without cancer, diabetes or Alzheimer's? It might be closer than you think. You'll meet a 51-year-old woman who has undergone a revolutionary gene therapy to reverse her biological age. And I decided to be patient zero. You'll hear from a leading scientist who has boldly predicted that humans will live up to 1,000 years in the near future. We are sufficiently close to bringing aging under comprehensive medical control. And I'll share some practical tips that you can use today to slow down your own aging process and live a longer and healthier life. Are you ready to turn back the clock? At Harvard University, the Sinclair Lab, led by Dr. David Sinclair, has dedicated decades to researching aging. Dr. Sinclair's groundbreaking work views aging as a curable disease caused by information loss in our cells. He has a theory that explains why aging happens and how we might be able to slow it down or even reverse it. Called the information theory of aging, it says that aging is caused by the loss of information in our cells. Information is like the instructions that tell our cells what to do and how to behave. For example, information tells our skin cells to make skin and our brain cells to make brain. This information is stored in two places, our DNA and our epigenome. DNA is like the fabric that makes up our cells. And the epigenome is like the pattern that tells the fabric how to fold and shape into different kinds of cells. He compares our DNA to a compact disc, a once popular medium for storing songs and videos in the early 2000s. Over time, the disc gets scratched and the reader gets dirty. So the information becomes distorted or corrupted. When information is lost, our cells forget their original instructions and start to act differently. They might stop working properly, grow too much, or die too soon. This leads to problems like wrinkles, diseases, and aging. Of course, lifespan can be extended. So it's clear that we know this in every model organism, that we can extend lifespan. What's your take on the loss of epigenetic information? How big of a contributing factor? is it to aging? Uh, epigenetic information is used um, currently as, um, as a way to quantify the aging process. So we call it, we call it so-called epigenetic clocks. This is a, actually a major development in the field which started by Steve Horvath. Um, and so we use these approaches. And then uh, epigenetics also can be targeted so that um, this would lead to rejuvenation. Dr. Steve Horvath is a genetics professor at Cambridge University in the UK. I talked to him about his groundbreaking work and his thoughts on Dr. Sinclair's research. Could you please explain to our viewers whether you agree with scientists like David Sinclair and others that aging is a disease? It's not a natural process. It's not an inevitable process. It can be cured. For practical purposes, I think it's useful to interpret aging as a disease, because um, when you do so, you then um, um, immediately say, can we develop drugs against it? And I do think that's a very worthwhile goal to develop drugs against aging, you know? Whether it's natural or not, who cares, you know? 
This is a loss of eyesight, natural. Yes, everybody uh, loses their vision as they age, you know, but um, one can still do something about it. And same with any other manifestations of aging. What I can tell you is uh, David Sinclair published this finding in uh, Nature, which is a top journal. It went through careful peer review. One big reason scientists think we can live longer is by looking at certain special animals. For example, a bowhead whale, a mammal like us, can live more than 200 years. Some turtles seem not to get old, jellyfish never die, and naked mole rats are cancer resistant. But here is the catch. Most of the experiments to reverse aging have been done on animals, not humans. So we don't have solid proof that it works for us yet. So by treating the mouse with this lead antibody, therapeutic antibody, we could achieve up to 30% increase in the healthy lifespan. Actually, several research labs work on the same idea. And um, the idea is to use certain genes, they are known as the Yamanaka factors, and to briefly express them to rejuvenate cells and organs. What exactly are Yamanaka factors? These are four special proteins that can turn grown-up cells into flexible ones called pluripotent stem cells. This discovery won a Nobel Prize for Japanese scientist Shinya Yamanaka. At Dr. Sinclair's lab, they use these factors to make a blind mouse see again. You can see it in two videos. In the first, the mouse doesn't react to what is around it, but in the second, it's moving its head. Dr. Sinclair says the mouse has regained near perfect vision. This has been done with other animals too. Uh, we're showing with monkeys that you can actually restore vision and using the same system, but with human genes now. Back in the 1900s, the average American lived about 48 years. Today, we are hitting 78. That's almost 50% more life, thanks to things like vaccines and new medical treatments. The pursuit of extending human life has spawned a burgeoning industry, with companies channeling significant resources into discovering drugs that combat aging. Some say that artificial intelligence, AI, could hold the key to unlocking further advances in this domain. The company that we have spun out of my academic lab is called Aura Biomedical. And really it's focused on identifying new interventions to target the biology of aging. And so the goal is really to figure out um, at the largest scale possible, what are the most effective ways to target that biology of aging to increase healthy longevity. And so the, the company has developed some robotic technology coupled with artificial intelligence that allows us to do that. Um, and our goal is to screen a million different molecules to figure out which work the best to impact aging. But this one is a nasal spray that works with the, with the phones, a smart device, and it'll be asking questions, right? And using a, 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 an aging clock in the phone to actually track, help you track how you're, you're doing and is the medicine helping, what other things are helping reverse your biological age on the app. I, I'd say the most dramatic animal test uh, that we've done was performed and funded by the National Institutes of Health and that was in searing hamsters. And what they did was they infected these hamsters with SARS-CoV-2 virus and what we were able to show was that we were therapeutic for the infection so we were able to uh, completely get rid of any of the symptoms of COVID in the, uh, or your sudden acute respiratory syndrome, which is what where the wind SARS comes from. Dr. Brand Kennedy says, most scientists agree that we can slow down aging. There's been a tremendous amount of research already in the aging field. We obviously need to learn a lot more, but we know enough now, I think, to slow human aging. Uh, but we have to validate that, and there haven't been enough clinical studies yet, so we're really focused on getting that validation. I think reprogramming is very interesting. Uh, it's still a nascent field in terms of aging, and it needs to be explored further, but reprogramming has a lot of potential. And then long-term things, gene therapy, stem cell therapy, uh, those things could have even bigger impacts. So. Um, I think, can we reverse aging is an open question, and you'll hear all kinds of different opinions on that if you talk to scientists. Can we slow aging? I think most scientists in the field believe that's possible. 
Big names and companies are spending billions to figure out how to make us live longer. Google, for instance, has established a $3 billion lab called Calico to tackle aging. That made the Time magazine to write a cover story titled, Can Google Solve Death? One way they're trying to reverse aging in people is through something called gene therapy. It means tweaking our genes to make our cells younger. But hold on, the FDA has approved gene therapy for some diseases like cancer, but not for aging. Scientists therefore caution against premature experimentation until further comprehensive research is conducted. Still, one woman has already undergone this revolutionary procedure. My company is BioViva, and we're a gene therapy company, and we're committed to treating biological aging with genes. In 2015, we started the company with a premise that we would treat the first human subject to see if the technology that had already been around for a decade could actually reverse biological aging. And um, so we raised the money to do it, and I decided to be patient zero because if I was going to give this drug to other people, I wanted to make sure that it was safe. Um, I was injected over 100 times all over my body in high cancer risk areas to make sure that it didn't cause cancer. We started to see telomere lengthening within the first six months, which is an indicator of biological age. It's just one form of biological age. So you might see videos of me and it says, she reversed her aging by 20 years. That's in one hallmark of aging. Uh, we hoped that we had actually cured all of aging, <laughs> but we t it turns out one gene doesn't do that. So <laughs> we had to go back to the drawing board and start to uh, research other genes that might treat aging. And now, now what we work on is a delivery method to get multiple genes in at one time to see if we can get the super wave effect and stop your aging. Meet Dr. Aubrey de Grey, a superstar in the longevity world. He's been studying aging for nearly 30 years and thinks people who will live to a thousand years are already among us. Looking back, it is a little surprising that nobody had um, really thought about the idea that repairing the molecular and cellular damage of aging might be easier than slowing down the rate at which the body makes that damage in the first place. But, um, you know, it took me like 10 years probably to persuade my colleagues in the expert community that this was a sensible idea. Um, but of course, now it's very much mainstream and um, I don't have to justify it anymore. Sure. Uh, nearly two decades ago, I think you said that uh, the human beings that will live a thousand years uh, were already born. Do you still stand by that claim? So I absolutely do still think that we are sufficiently close to bringing aging under comprehensive medical control that we have a very good chance now that people who are alive today will never get sick as a result of how long ago they were born and that will inherently result in four-digit lifespan at least. How old are you? That may seem like a simple question, but the answer is not so straightforward. There are two different ways to measure your age, chronological and biological. Chronological age is the number of years you've lived since you were born. This is the age you would usually tell people when they ask how old you are. As for biological age, it's the age of your body, based on how well it works. Glycan Age is just one of many companies saying that they can figure out our biological age and help us stay healthy. Glycans are these complex sugars that are surrounding every cell in your body. And we know that they're changing with age. Why they're changing? Because they, affect, they are affected by chronic inflammation. And chronic inflammation is one of the 12 hallmarks of aging. So once your body starts building more and more chronic inflammation, you start aging faster. Now, when will we really be able to turn back the clock? Dr. Sinclair is pretty hopeful that it'll happen for most of us. Is it going to happen in your lifetime? But you know, unless you're 105, I think we've got a good chance. But while we wait for that, here are some things you can do today to fight aging. Get some exercise, avoid smoking, and limit alcohol. Eat more plants, cut down on sugar, try eating less, or doing intermittent fasting. Until the next episode of Next, stay healthy. Goodbye.